Hello everybody, my name is Mike Tannick and welcome to Hearts of Iron 4 Kaiser Reich. I am really happy to be bringing this series to you guys. Uh, we are going to be playing as the French Commune uh, with the Kaiser Reich mod, which is a very complex mod. Uh, and actually, if I'm being honest, I had to uh, do a little bit of a playthrough before I started this, just to make sure that I didn't screw it up so badly that... Uh, we got five episodes in and I lost, which actually could have very well happened. But as you can see here, it's a mods alternate history mod where what if Germany won the First World War? And uh, as you saw in my last playthrough, uh, Germany and the Ottoman Empire did win the First World War. But we are going to be continuing in this alternate history. So let us begin. Uh as France, the only territory that we occupy is here in France proper. And down here we have the French Republic. And they are uh, somewhat democratic compared to us. Our government is uh, socialist. Uh, here it's called the syndicalist, but it's a form of socialism. And we are a member of the Third International, where... Uh, you can see there's also, we are in a faction with uh, the Socialist Republic of Italy and the Union of Britain. And the Socialist Republic of Italy is right here, just this little bit in uh, northern Italy. So let us begin, finally. Uh, let's go down the list here of our notifications, and we're going to do the standard uh, opening Researches, uh, we're going to do basic machine, machine tools. We are going to do uh, mechanical computing. All the standard opening texts. Uh, and we're going to have one extra here since we do have four research slots. And what I always like to do is to make sure that we get our infantry equipment up to date. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, now that is done. Uh, we have no template for support equipment. Really? Really, really? Okay, we will get to our production momentarily, but first things first. Let's go to the next one. Uh, free civilian factories. Let's go ahead and build more civilian factories. Uh, we have 33 total. 13 of them are into consumer goods. So let's go here. There's 80% infrastructure. And here. Yeah, what do we got? We got, oh, okay. We have 20 civilian factories and that's fine. Uh, I'm happy about that. Free dockyards. Now, before we actually build anything in the dockyard department, let's see what we have. Oh, Jesus Christ. We have a doom stack, 68 ships. Uh, there's 10 battleships, 5 light cruisers, 30 destroyers, and 23 subs. Ooh. Yee. Ugh. Yeah, that, uh, fleet composition is all jacked up. We'll fix that. We'll fix that. Uh, what is this other fleet? The smaller one. Okay, we have, uh, this is more like it. 2 battleships, uh, 2 heavy cruisers, 3 light cruisers, 15 destroyers. Okay. I kind of like that. That's that's a little bit better, but uh, we have to build something, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we only have 100 convoys, so that is going to be our priority. First and foremost is let's build some convoys, and we'll put uh, four dockyards into convoys, and that leaves us with five left over, and what I saw that we were missing most... Well, we have no carriers, guys. No carriers whatsoever. So let's put five into carriers. And I know we're going into the hole here on uh, resources. And we'll fix that. Next. Uh, no national focus set. Well, we are going to fix that straight away. Um, direction of the economy. Uh, now, we're going to come to some decisions here, guys. Where we have to make some decisions uh, before... We go down some of these paths here. So I want to do the communal army first. Uh, and that is going to give us plus five war support. Which doesn't seem important now, but we'll we'll get that figured out. Now, let's deal with our divisions. Uh, 
These are all of our divisions. And how many do we have? 65 total. Okay, so let's put those guys into a single army. Now, what I would like to do first and foremost is to separate off uh, those who do not have uh, the experience. With no experience. Okay, and it, yeah, we're definitely not going to do that. That's just going to take forever. Um, okay, first and foremost, let's put the Marines into their own division. I'm sorry, into their own army. And we will call them the Marines, cleverly, without a capital A. Okay, and where should they go? Uh, you know what, just... just for now, I, I'd rather put them in a port in case we need them on short notice. Next. Um, well, you know what? I, what's kind of ridiculous here is I don't really know what the uh, divisions look like. And it looks like we have... Oh, boy. We have Division d'Infanterie Federale. We have Milici Caminal. We have... Oh... Same kind of division with fire support. Okay, so we have a lot going on here. Uh, the Milice Popular, what is this? Oh, that's militia. Um, yeah, we are not going to build that. Uh, yeah, we can delete that template. Uh, that's dumb. So what I would like to do is all three of these have the same icon. So let's, let's swap that out so we actually know what the hell is going on here. Uh... The first division up the template we won't keep is the star division. The next is going to be... We'll give them cross rifles. And what we're going to do is swap all these out. We're not going to keep them. I don't think. Or are we? What's the difference here? What is the difference? Okay. Uh, these guys have nine infantry regiments. These guys have... Nine infantry regiments and no support. Okay, so that's the same. Oh, okay, and there we go. These guys have nine infantry regiments and uh, support artillery. So that is what we are going to change our infantry to. The uh, This long name here with the fire support. So let's do that. Okay, so all the crossed rifles. That's 16 divisions we have selected. Let's put them... Into this. Ooh. Oh, man. Yeah, this is going to cost us, but guys, it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. Okay. Next. Oh, my God. 21 divisions of this other kind. That is excessive. That's going to cost us a lot of equipment. But, guys, it's going to be worth it, I think. <laughs> I think it's going to be worth it. Yeah, yeah, it's totally going to be worth it, guys. It, just just trust in old Mike Tannic here. All right, so let's go ahead and do something like this. Uh, okay, so we are going to have to build a training army. And what we're going to do is deselect... Yeah, we're going to deselect all of the divisions that have level 3 training. And apparently this is going to take forever. Don't understand why that's happening. Okay, well, we will get to this because I have other stuff to talk about. So let's put them in their own training army and train. And uh, here's what we're going to do. Yeah, We'll just select the ones that don't need the training. So I have been really excited to start this uh, mod for the longest Actually, it was supposed to be... Wait, is this right? I was supposed to start this mod uh, well over a week ago, guys. But, you know, I got caught up with uh, home stuff. I got caught up with uh, the unfortunate ending of the last series. And, you know, it all worked the way it was supposed to. And it's fine now. So, I have plenty of time to dedicate to this mod. And let's go ahead and get the clock ticking while I'm sitting here blabbing. And let's go ahead and take the time up to five. Yeah, can we do that? Yeah, five ticks per second. There we go. 
All right, now let's go ahead and deal with our insufficient resources. Uh, okay, we're minus five rubber, minus five. Okay, here we go. The Commune of France. The Third Republic ended the way it began, defeated by German arms and facing communist revolution at home. In no November of 1919, a revolutionary general strike was called by the CGT, paralyzing the country and causing the downfall of bourgeois government. The party of order was not strong enough to put an end to the unrest, and in the subsequent months, the French establishment was forced out of France by a coalition of leftist forces in a brief but brutal civil war. For the past 15 years, the self-styled commune of France has united behind a common platform of syndicalist-socialist consensus, headed by the ruling Comte de Salut Pobli. However, by 1936, the consensus was that reached that in order to rebuild the shattered country and defend the fruits of revolution from foreign menace is being deemed as increasingly outdated by many critics and growing calls for more radical policies. France is increasingly confident in her security and in her mission, but the French revolutionary tradition is disparate, and it is unclear precisely which ideological strands shall become dominant in the years to come. Okay, so that's setting us up uh, with a little bit of preface of what we're going to be doing here. Um, and it appears that we are going to be, oh boy, having a hell of a time on our hands. Uh, now, one thing I want to make sure before we go forward is, do we have enough oil to be training them? Uh, as a matter of fact, let us get rid of these old templates first, and then we will, uh, worry about the oil okay so what are we burning through all right so we're not really burning through any oil but that kind of makes me concerned because why why are we not burning through oil even like the most basic units have have that so let's see let's see what we got going here uh motorized divisions that's the template that i want to see uh okay so we have Six motorized infantry and one light tank. That's interesting. That's an interesting combination. I like that. And what about the cavalry? Okay, the cavalry is the same. Six cav and uh, one light tank. Um, you know what? We're probably going to get rid of the cavalry. And let's turn them into motorized. Just to... You know, I mean... It, it, we should actually... You know, update our force. I know we, we have plenty of divisions, but... Okay, what's going on here? Assassination of President Kerensky. Okay. Uh, yeah, I already saw this. Uh, long and short of it is the Russian president got assassinated. There we go. Um, okay, so... Yeah, I think... If we're doing this... No, I, you know what? I was going to change them over to motorized, but I, I don't want to dedicate the uh, production to that. So, yeah, we're not going to do that. And anyway, let's update our production. So, what do we got here? All right, we got... Ooh, we're 15 grand in the hole on infantry equipment. We have negative 436 artillery. Uh, support equipment. Okay, so... We are producing the interwar bomber, which we're dedicating two factories to, and that's going to be outdated ASAP. So let's go ahead and cancel that. That will give us two military factories. And let's put both of those into artillery. But why did that not take? Okay, that's why. Because we're trying to build... Two light tanks and two naval bombers at once. And you know what? I'm not even sure about the naval bombers, guys. It might be a good idea because I don't know what Germ What does Germany's navy look like before I make this decision? Let's have a look here. Hmm. Okay, well, they have a hell of a lot of uh, convoys. And a really big navy. Okay, so yeah, let's let's go ahead and keep up with the naval bombers because it looks as though we are going to need that. 
But what we need more, besides, especially the inner war fighters, Jesus. No, let's take that factory down and put one more factory into... Let's put it into infantry equipment, because we are critically short on that. And while we're here, let's deal with our, uh, our resource shortages. South Africa, do we want to trade with them? Or would we rather trade with the Russian Republic? They're authoritarian, so they would not be the best trading partners for us. What about South Africa? Yeah, they're also authoritarian. Okay, so the two leading producers of chromium are authoritarian. So let's just go with South Africa for now. And we'll trade the eight. And for tungsten, do we want to trade for that? I'm going to say yes. And I'm also going to say we trade with Portugal because that would make the most sense there, the closest of all the producers. So now we are okay. Uh, but what are we building? I want to make sure that this is actually going up and we're not just uh, wasting our time here, guys. Okay, good. That's fine. Now, one thing we haven't addressed is our Air Force. Uh, do we have an Air Force? Yeah, we do. Okay. Now, I would like to train these guys, but what I would... Uh... We have a few more planes than that, but I think what is more important is to train our Navy. Now, based on our fuel income, I might have to break this Navy up to, to train it. But let's see. Let's see what our, um, let's see what our fuel consumption is if I just start to train them. Okay. And it looks, oh boy. Oh yeah. Oh. We're using 663 per day and only gaining 100 per day. So let's go ahead and sort that out right now. Um, let's import at least one oil and see what that looks like. And let's... Uh, no. I was going to trade with the United Britain, but let's go with the United States. And we'll import one and see what that does. Okay, now we're gaining 500 while spending 663. So let's let's import two because guys, I I would rather have a trained navy than that extra factory right now. So okay, Mosley wants to talk with Valois. Oswald Mosley of the Union of Britain has invited the leader of the Surreillians, George Valois, to Birmingham to discuss the common ground between their ideologies. Valois has. Thanked him for the invite and set off in the name of internationalism, bringing with him as guest Hungarian exiles Tibor Smiley and uh, Matthias Rakosi, whose views are also very much in line with uh, Mosley's and Mussolini's. Ooh, oh boy. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's up that. And there we go. Now we are gaining more than we are spending. And we might have to adjust that later, guys. Um, obviously, we have an enormous Navy stack right here that needs to be trained. But right now, I am I just want to get at least one of our fleets trained. So that's interesting. What, oh, what would our diplomats want to have to do with an Austro-Hungarian going to the UK? And that is one of the things that's so great about this mod is you don't really know everything to begin with because it is alternate history. So you're not waiting for the usual events to unfold. Um, and that is one of the more fun things that uh, I found about this mod. So, okay. Anyway, uh, no template for support equipment. We know that. Uh, low manpower. Uh, what can we do about that, if anything? Nothing. Uh, the fall of Marcel Piverd. Despite the successful organization of the Syndicalist Congress in May, the Pivert administration has been criticized for its lack of response to the crackdown on trade unions in Germany. Today, the opposition in the Bourgien Rade du Trevet has agreed to a vote of no confidence on Pivert, who has announced that the new elections will be brought forward to elect a new Comte. His duties will be temporarily assumed by the Comte de Salut Pablis until the 
Re last results come in. Okay. So what does that do for us? Wow. Gain base stability. Minus 20%. Okay. Uh, we gain the Comte de Salud Publi, which grants head of government syndicalist silent recourse. Okay. So we get um, plus 0.7% political power gain and resource gain efficiency plus 14%. That is concerning. I would rather have the uh, stability, if I'm being honest, guys. Um, particularly with an angry Germany here. Okay, the Totalist Charter. Mussolini, Valois, Beria, and other interested parties arrived in Birmingham today to discuss their common ground. It has been agreed that Maximism, Surrealism, and National Syndicalism all share basic principles of the state's primacy in the social struggle the role of national identity within the state and the importance of a strong central authority to preserve and build socialism. The charter also claims the socialist state is the final stage of human development and that democracy is not necessary to achieve socialism. These statements have drawn great criticisms from other socialist factions who gave it the name totalism as a play on totalitarian socialism, which is okay. So we're having, we're having uh, fractures within um, within the ideology of socialism, which is concerning for us, considering we are a form of socialist. We are syndicalists, but just barely. Uh, the Travailleurs are only 52%. Uh, who else do we have here? We have the anarchists, who are 28%. I think they are the second biggest party after ours and the jacobins and surrealians are 12 percent Ooh, the jacobins go all the way back to uh the original french revolution okay edward the eighth is crowned okay good good congratulations edward the eighth uh so my immediate concern here guys uh, we obviously have uh forts built up along the border of germany and rightfully so so let us go ahead and uh, I know these guys are training. So let's put the guys who are not training on the border. Okay, message from the Union of Britain. Oh, they are guaranteeing our independence. Thank you, Britain. I was guaranteeing our independence before you ever were, but that's... Uh, thank you. Thank you. So let's go ahead and put um, the first army here. And you know what? Some of these divisions are uh i didn't catch that i'm i switched their template so they are going to have to go into the training army but i will wait for them to get in a position first uh because i don't know what's going to happen with germany so here guys is the part where i'm glad i did my homework on this mod because this is election day one and this affects what national focuses we are going to have um, so let's go ahead and go to our national focuses, uh, obviously clarifying the communal army. So there are a couple of points that we have to take into consideration, uh, before we make a decision here. Uh, one is not only which party each of these, uh, representatives represent, uh, there is also their, what bonuses or debuffs they provide, but also it decides which tree we go down here um, in our national focuses. And once we make a choice, we cannot go back. And I was actually looking at some of these and uh, let's look at the focuses before we actually look at the candidates. Um, what I really liked was the centralized high command if we were able to take this national focus tree, because look what we get. Uh, we get supply consumption, minus 5%. That is a, na a national spirit, which cannot be taken away, of course, unless there's a different focus, which takes it away. Uh, we get 100% research bonus for land doctrine. We get army experience, and we get military academy, which is 100% bonus for land doctrine, and uh, we get plus 20% planning speeds and plus 10% max planning. Um, there are a lot of good options here, guys. Um, let's see here. Like for officer's initiative, uh, there's army experience. There's land doctrine, which is similar. And then uh, bonuses for research on support artillery and technology. Um, but this one to me seemed the best. So... 
as bad as it is, uh, we are going to have to support the Jacobins. And that's going to increase their popularity versus ours. So let's go ahead and do that for now because we have other choices to make. So that is my reasoning behind it. So we're going to do that. We're going to take the Jacobins for now. And I didn't want to do that just for the fact that uh, we have another reason to worry here is party popularity. And while that was a fact uh, to worry about in vanilla HOI4, now it costs you even more. So, so we have to pay very close attention to that in the upcoming days and the upcoming elections. Uh, okay, so let's go back here. Uh, we need to send several of these divisions to the training army. So let's go ahead and do that. And into the training army you go. Election day two. The reassignment general due to its key purpose over the external... Okay. So this decision doesn't have anything to do with our national focuses. So we can safely make the decision based off of one, the party, and two, the either buffs or debuffs that we get from them. And based on the fact that we had to pick uh, a Jacobin last time, I am almost certain that we are going to go with the uh, Travailleur or the Syndicalists, which is our current party, because I want our party to stay firmly in power. Um, and if we choose uh, Roger Salengro, we will get... Uh, Two base stability and 5% popularity in uh, syndicalism. And guys, I don't see any other reason why we would go any other direction. So let's go ahead and pick our party for this one. Thank you very much. Thanks for playing, guys. All right, next. Okay, so we have all the armies that we needed to be trained in the training army. Um, hang on, let me, let me make sure we're doing this brainly. And we are. And what of our Marines? Uh, ooh, why is their strength so low exactly? I want to see why their strength isn't quite keeping up. Oh, okay. They're short on infantry equipment. Of course they are because we're not producing nearly enough. Only 62.45 per day. So I'm tempted, guys. I'm really tempted. Do we... Do we really need light uh, we do need light tanks we have two division designs that take it okay election day three internal security uh travailleur charles rapaport has resigned from his post of delegate for internal security has he wasn't he yeah he's this guy minister of interior okay former chairman marceau pervert still hoping to preserve his political future has managed to get endorsed by the Travalier wing and is now grappling for the post with the stern Jacobin Maurice Thorez Cerulean. Oh, wow. Okay. So this guy is gone. He's a syndicalist, but he also sucks. Look at that resource gain efficiency minus four. Oh, recruitable population factor plus 3% though. And guys, we are already hurting. Okay, so he is out. He is out. So let's see. I would like to choose our party, the Travaliers, if possible. So let's go ahead and see the buffs here. Okay, political power gain plus stability. My oh jeez. Okay, so gain base stability minus five, plus fifty thousand manpower and plus five percent popularity of syndicalism. Oh boy. Okay, well, yeah, this guy's bad. Uh, manpower minus 50,000. Uh, resistance growth plus 10. Ceralians. I really don't want to endorse the Ceralians. Not just because the Ceralians suck, but look at the debuffs. And the anarchists. There's a lot of good to be gained from choosing the anarchists candidate, but there's e even more to be gained from choosing our own party. Um... Because we, uh, we're only 54% in control. So let's go ahead and choose the Trevalio. Uh, despite all the debuffs. Um, 
we're just gonna have to live with that and figure it out so all right so where were we yeah we were kind of humming and hawing about what to do with our production and guys what i think is going to happen here uh let's go ahead and take out the um war fighters because we're gaining next to nothing on that and we desperately need infantry equipment yeah and that'll up it by plus three per day at least for now you know until we actually get this sorted out so all right election day four economic affairs all right let's see what we got afghanistan declared war on the dominion of india really really and why would they do that? Okay. Oh, well, guys, let me know how it goes. Okay. Uh, today's election seems to be a plebiscite on the commune's economic policy implemented in recent years. Many visions of the future syndicalist economy, more or less concentrated on industry or agriculture, are all in competition. All of them are crucial for the future final struggle against Germany. Okay, guys, and this is... Uh, another decision that affects our national focuses. So let's go ahead and get over to it. Um, yeah, direction of the economy. So there are some very good choices here. Uh, we have orthodox syndicalism, communal industrialization, war economy and agriculture or cooperatives. Now, going down each of these... Um, a lot of them provide similar bonuses, a lot of these focuses, and much of that is focused around how many civilian factories you get and how many military factories you get. And just based off of the interest of preserving our party, I mean, you guys, if you want, you can stop and read each of these. But what I gathered was the very best was orthodox syndicalism, because not only do I want to keep our party in power, but we also have some of the best um, buffs from these focuses. As you see here, we get two civilian factories, uh, two infrastructure, which I don't really care about, if I'm being honest. Uh, we get 100% research bonus for industry, which I have a plan on what to use that bonus on, and that could help us out immensely, bigly even. And then down here, um, improve management of unions. That will give us four civilian factories and one military factory. That is a big buff for us. And guys, these are all somewhat good choices, but this is the choice that I'm going with because I want to stick to syndicalism. But we also have this to worry about. You know, all the bonuses here. And unfortunately, the guy that we're getting... Um, yeah, Benoit Frachon, he gives us a recruitable population factor of minus 2%. But big buffs in construction speeds uh, and factory output. But we also get uh, two military factories and two civilian factories. So weighing out our choices here, this is going to be my choice. And I know I might get some hate for that. So let's do it. Boom. Done. Anyway, I'm curious to see how this fight turns out, because I think, is India... Yeah, they are a member of the Entente. India is, so I wonder what's going to happen in Afghanistan. Okay, the Fifth Anglo-Afghani War does not concern us. You can read that if you like. So, here we go, guys. We have the civilian factories that we just voted ourselves in on. So, let's put, obviously, one towards infantry equipment and one towards towed artillery. Uh, to get our division templates up to snuff. Um, and yeah, I, I'm i trying to decide what to do with our cavalry divisions, guys. I'm open to suggestions. Um, the one thing that keeps me from just turning them into infantry is the fact that they have tanks. And one thing that I was considering is if we change the... Cavalry divisions to regular infantry divisions. The tanks will go back into storage. And then from there, I could actually up 
the amount of tanks in our mobile infantry divisions, in our uh, motorized divisions. If that seems like a good idea to you guys, uh, that's really what I want to do. And I think that would make, you know, the best use of uh, our equipment and time and training. So let me know what you guys think about that. What to do with the cavalry. All right, Black Monday. Yes, this is the Berlin Stock Exchange crash. Okay. And I think this is the last day of elections. So, with the final election day, one of the leading issues of the Commune of France is raised. Diplomacy, which carries the double task of spreading the revolution throughout the world and preparing for revenge against Germany. If the very existence of the syndicalist international is not in danger yet, the future theaters of the world revolution will be defined today. Okay, guys. Now, I looked at this, and there are very few bonuses that go with anything but choosing our own party here, the Travailleurs or the Syndicalists, uh, Charles Rappaport. I mean, look, either everybody really likes us, and we gain uh, same ideology, monthly opinion, or everybody could hate us, you know, and we get land fort construction speed. Do we really want that? No, we don't. Right now, we are still in the beginning phases where we're trying to find our feet. We're trying to find our division design. So let's make sure everybody likes us, shall we? Yes. Thank you. Now, yeah, what to do with the cavalry divisions, guys? I need to know what to do about that by next episode or I'm going to make my own possibly poor decision on it. Um, all right. The results. Trevalier majority. Even if many saw this in the election, the followed Travelier led consensus that has ruled the commune since the death of Emile Poget, they have managed to secure a firm majority in the election. While Pervert could be recalled to take up his post, this would be very, very unlikely. Okay. All right. Good. All right. So, who, unlike Pervert, is strong enough in his final glory? Okay. So, we have to make a choice here. All right, politics will change. Trevelliers becomes the ruling party. Okay, that's the same for both of these. Trevelliers are the ruling party. Uh, we get daily political power gain minus 12, plus 5 military factory, civilian factory. Okay. So there's real... I, I don't know why anyone would choose uh, Souverine. Let's, let's recall Pavert. Thank you. I'm happy with that. Are you guys happy with that? I'm happy with that. Okay, good. All right, well, guys, we managed to get uh, the major decisions out of the way, which are going to uh, basically dictate the way the rest of this campaign is going. So I wanted to thank you for joining me on... This is basically the second campaign of uh, this channel, and I can only hope and wish and pray that um, you guys come up with all the help and support that you did with the first campaign and maybe even more i am always open to suggestion especially with a mod as complex as this there are a lot of moving pieces here and i am not probably able to see all of them but i thank you guys for joining me on this if you enjoyed it please consider subscribing and also again leave a comment any helps, tips, criticism will be taken into consideration and responded to. Love you guys. Bye-bye.